commemorates World Malaria Day under the slogan, Zero Malaria Starts With Me. But just how is the government striving to give cost-free treatment to children below five and pregnant women? Find out in this newscast. Coronavirus pushes Cameroonians to scramble for hand-washing cans with taps to contain the virus. In tonight's newscast, we take you to one of the sales points where traders acknowledge they are making brisk business. Individuals and Goodwill Associations synergize with government in donating equipment and cash to fight COVID-19. Get echoes of the ceremonies in Adamawa East, Littoral West and Southwest region. And those are top stories. Good evening, you're welcome to the 7.30 News. I am Gladys Tata. Cameroon has recorded a significant drop in the prevalence of malaria in the last 20 years. According to the Minister of Public Health, Manauda Malachi, some measures taken by government to provide free preventive treatment to pregnant women accounts for the decline. The cost of treatment for malaria has reduced significantly, with children below five being treated free of charge for simple malaria. However, the disease remains a public health problem affecting 6 million people and causing death of 11,000 people each year. As Beatrice Lassan tells us. Official figures show a significant drop in global malaria cases in the last 20 years, with Cameroon's prevalence rate drop capped at 6 percent between 2013 and 2018. The Minister of Public Health says contributing factors to this drop range from free preventive malaria treatment given to pregnant women to free treatment of simple malaria in under fives and the offering of free bed nets to households of the country. But not yielding to temptations to celebrate, the government of Cameroon stays preoccupied by the disease which affects 6 million people and causes the death of 11,000 each year in the country. A World Health Organization report on malaria names Cameroon the world's number 11th country most affected by malaria. Since 2016, the Ministry of Public Health reports that the number of cases which had dropped significantly started climbing steadily and needs to be checked. Cameroonians enrolled to the World Health Organization's High Burden to High Impact Initiative, which urges more government commitment in working towards a malaria-free world. For this reason, last year the government embarked on a four-year reinforced strategy worth 280 billion CIV francs to fight malaria. Currently, the program has been slowed down by the COVID-19 pandemic. And as you heard in our top story, Cameroon has joined the rest of the globe today to observe the 13th edition of World Malaria Day under the theme, Zero Malaria Starts With Me. For several years now, the government has been striving hard to contain the epidemic, providing free treatment for children below the age of five and pregnant women. Romeo Kenyu visited the National Rollback Malaria Committee in Yaoundé and sought to know if the move is effective in hospitals across the national territory. Romeo? Children below the age of five and pregnant women top the chart of those most affected with malaria in Cameroon. The country is ranked 11th globally per the 2019 WHO report on the epidemic. Government is therefore on the malaria offensive by providing free treatment for the most vulnerable. For the pregnant women, uh, they are given uh, ITP, that is an intermittent preventive treatment. For the children below five, they also have uh, some free uh, intervention. One of them is uh, the diagnosis, the free diagnosis of malaria. These are things that are given freely. But now I have to say, Everything that is going to be given because of the gravity criteria that has given, that has blocked that this malaria to be uh, severe, they're going to be treated and it's going to be paid. Let's think that these children have to be given uh, blood. Uh, the parents are going to pay for that blood. Medics believe that government via the move has immensely helped reduce the prevalence rate of malaria in the country. We have had uh, very good trends uh, until uh, 2016. But from that date, uh, we have seen that the trend is going a little bit up. Uh, we are trying to do everything for us to bring it in the right way. The 2020 World Malaria Day is celebrated under the theme, Zero Malaria Start With Me.
And on to other news, economists say the coronavirus pandemic is an opportunity for local business to reinforce their production, processing and commercialization activities in order to meet local and sub-regional demand for basic products. Their views are echoed by trade officials who insist that with global commerce on uncertain grounds, the Made in Cam Cameroon brand stands a chance of getting a bigger market share at home and on the continent. Clarice Ari Takank explains. Making a good deal from a bad situation. This is how some observers describe the gains to be made by the Made in Cameroon brand from the prevailing public health crisis. With global trade on a shaky platform, it is an opportunity, many agree, for local products to extend their market share at the domestic and sub-regional levels. It's the opportunity to, to continue to reinforce why we, should we continue to be dependent, for instance, from... Uh, Asia. You have land, you can produce. For me, it's an excellent opportunity, not only to produce for uh, the domestic market, local market, but also we have uh, neighbor countries. The demand is strong. Local, small and medium-sized enterprises have been challenged to make the plunge. They will, however, have to step up their game in order to have a bigger bargaining power. The first thing that they have to do to be up to the task is to be able to produce, ma produce massively. The second thing is to be able to match you know, the quality with the price. They are lacking in uh, several spheres. The first sphere is uh, access to finance. The second thing that they will need is a lot of um, assistance from the government in terms of taxation. Secondly, in terms of regulation. Demand and supply at crossroads as nations struggle to contain the spread of the coronavirus. An occasion entrepreneurs are seizing to build new businesses while reinforcing existing ones. A path Cameroon's economic operators are urged to embark on. The sales of buckets attached with taps has become a brisk business in the capital city, with many integrating the sector lately. Vendors of the buckets say since the outbreak of the coronavirus, they have been making considerable profits. Romeo uh, Kenny told one of the popular sales points in Yaoundé and put together the following report for the 7.30 News. Trois statues au Lesoua, the epicenter of where containers and buckets are sold in Yaoundé. Ever since the COVID-19 pandemic stressed its tentacles into the country, sales here have not been the same. As to compare the beginning up to now, things have changed because everybody now owns one. Then we could sell a bucket for 12, even 13,000 francs. But now we can sell that same bucket that we sold for 13,000, for 8,000 or even 9,000. Different varieties of buckets made of plastic material attached with faucets are sold but the choice depends on the client. The price of even 20 liters you can have for 8,000, 8,500, even 9,000. At first, we're buying these buckets at, at some uh, 2,000 francs. Presently, when you come to buy the buckets, the prices are not, you know, encouraging. They're a bit higher. And we don't have a specific place where we buy buckets. You can buy them anywhere because the prices of the bucket have not changed in the market. But we change the prices here because we attach something to the buckets. In the streets of the nation's capital, the business is equally hidden fruit, with many switching to the new line of trade. The close down of schools and colleges in the country has left teachers of lay private schools in suspense as concerns the payment of their salaries. Proprietors are complaining of hard times, battling to meet up with their financial commitments. Ewana Ipole visited some private institutions in the nation's capital to take stock of the situation. His report. The management of lay private schools and colleges in the country has become difficult following the close down of the institutions to limit the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. No, it's not easy for us because before they shut down, uh, most parents had not paid their fees, but uh, we thank God that uh, our proprietors is doing a wonderful job. Uh, we've paid our teachers up to date. The situation is very, very difficult because we we continue with uh, some act academic activities, courses online. We are paying our, our teachers. We are not receiving uh, subvention from the government. But I think in this particular situation, I think the government should see how to support a higher institution. Last month, government instructed proprietors to pay salaries for the month of March 
As the month of April is rounding off, some teachers are worried about their situation. We are working round the clock, so we deserve a salary because we follow our periods. All of us do know that as part-time teachers, what we do or what we get from the different institutions we teach is what actually food, put foods on our various tables. The teachers are still hopeful that despite the financial hardship, their proprietors will provide something for them to feed their families. And uh, the measure to contain the spread of the coronavirus in Cameroon, like hand washing, is scrupulously being respected in shops in the nation's capital. Victor Sigat taught some of these shops to find out how they are being respected and has the following report. In the nation's capital, have equally embarked on the fight against COVID-19. Amongst the measures put in place by the government and the World Health Organization, hand watching is the most common which they have opted for their clients. Since this pandemic started, the general director saw to it that the, all the measures should be respected. We have uh, a bucket of uh, running water where all the workers wash their hands before coming in, and then we have the disinfectant. We have also put, make it a practice to wear this mask. All our workers, you will not see a worker without the mask. A practice that has become a routine. Some customers don't want to wash their hands or to prevent themselves. We tell them that we are not going to save them. It's a necessity to wash your hands because each and every one of us knows the risk of avoiding to respect these rules. This measure amongst others, they say, is to help check the spread of the coronavirus. The outbreak of the coronavirus in Cameroon has spurred budding digital stars to superpower up their innovative minds and come up with projects that can help the population embrace the paradigm shift wherein digital solutions are greatly solicited. This is the idea behind the 2020 edition of Barcam Cameroon, which kick-started yesterday via a video conference in Yaoundé, chaired by Post and Telecommunications boss Minette Libon Lili King. As UT Kaleli Songa reports, 30 projects are to be presented by the 200 online participants from across the country to the jury, after which the best will be selected. Yoti? Seizing the moment to showcase what digital solution startups in Cameroon can drum up during this era when social distancing is highly recommended begins with this platform. It's still work in progress, but good enough to launch the 2020 edition of Barcamp Cameroon. Barcamp is uh, like a brainstorming sessions. They are going to work for three days trying to solve a problem we are facing to in Cameroon. For young people, this looks very innovative because they want to do it online. They need to uh, uh, master the technology. About 200 participants from across the country will present 30 projects online before a seven-member jury. For example, we have uh, some chatbots who are supposed to be tested for helping each other uh, in contact with the coronavirus to be uh, well uh, treated. The expectations are for some of their innovations to help curb the spread of the coronavirus. They have identified the difficulties we are going through. So my expectations is that on Sunday night, we will have many proposals who can help the government, public or private, to deal and reduce the expansion of that uh, pandemic. So I have confidence that they are going to go even beyond uh, COVID-19 and think about all other sectors. This year's theme, Digitalizing Cameroon after COVID-19, is intended to keep the participants on track as they hack the COVID-19 crisis for Cameroon. A team from the Public Health Ministry in partnership with the Gaoundé City Council has disinfected CRTV's offices and surroundings this Saturday to fight the spread of COVID-19. The team of engineers disinfected the CRTV production center here in Balatou, the national station and the CRTV training center at Ekono. The gesture is an initiative of CRTV's Director General Shan Dongo, as Joyce Kimbi Fawaju tells us. <laughs> to the teeth with the needed equipment and antimicrobial products to disinfect CRTV surfaces and prevent it from the life-threatening COVID-19 and other pathogens. 
the sanitary engineers responding to the call by the director general of CRTV, proceeding with pumping tanks on their backs, spraying the surroundings of CRTV in Balatu and that of the national station, the surroundings of CRTV center regional station and that of its marketing agency. Inside spaces were honored chairs and all possible surfaces to prevent any transmission through surfaces and ensure the environment conducive for the CRTV staff, especially at this moment. The general manager of CRTV have decided that uh, the buildings of CRTV have to be disinfected. And um, because it is a place where you have many people coming in and out, you have many workers, uh, it is a place where you might be in contact with uh, virus because we don't know where people come from. So uh, he decided to call uh, the, the health ministry and uh, uh, Yaoundé City Council to come and do this job so that uh, we will have uh, to work in a clean environment and uh, free of viruses. The head of the sanitary spring team from the Yaoundé One municipality told CRTV that the antimicrobial product used has been tested and proven to be efficient against hard kill viruses viruses like the COVID-19. The surface disinfection is one in a series of several measures adopted by CRTV management and its staff, like the washing of hands, the wearing of masks and distancing to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Lawmakers at the Senate and the National Assembly from Faculty Division have donated anti-COVID-19 gadgets worth about 10 million CFA francs to boost local efforts in the fight against the pandemic. The consignment put together with the support of Mr. Peter Mafani Musonge, head of the CPDM permanent delegation to the Southwest region, was made in Limbe, as Olivia Mbwaye Mbwaye tells us. Water dispenser buckets, hand sanitizers, protective masks, gloves and other essential material for the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic worth slightly over 10 million francs CFA is the package members of the Senate and the National Assembly from FACO Division put together for the population as part of efforts to keep the coronavirus at bay. We have a duty and responsibility to make sure that they are healthy and strong for them to be able to carry out with their normal activities. The populations of the seven councils and staff of the different hospitals across FACO are the primary beneficiaries of the joint parliamentary action. We are going to go now to the suburb too so that we are sure that we are preventing within all our peripheries. An initiative intended to boost local efforts in the fight against the pandemic. Doing it together like this as one man, one person for our division is going to have a greater impact on the people. With the merciful hope that the populations will make good use of this material. In strict compliance with social distancing and other barrier measures, the representatives of the beneficiaries received the gadgets with a determination to work in synergy to curb the spread of the virus. In the, in the southwest region, where a consignment of medical and sanitary kits has been handed to the population of Manu Division, the largest, which is an initiative of Senator Fort Tabe Tando, first vice president at the Senate, will go a long way to curb the spread of COVID-19 in that division. British Ndep Asam Biwan tells us more from Boya. It was at the esplanade of the divisional office that representatives of the four subdivisions that constitute Manu converged to receive a consignment of sanitary and medical kits donated by first vice president at the Senate to check the spread of coronavirus in the division, comprising hand washing buckets, soap, hand sanitizers, and over 100 bags of rice to encourage his people to stay in confinement. The concern about their health, they have composed a song in the, in the, in the language. To pass the message across. To take note that I am representing a people and I come from this community and I know the, the, the education that is going on across the information technology that some of this information may not get here and even if it does, they may not be able to get to be in possession of those uh, medical kits which are supposed to be used. The mayors of Manfe Central, Eumojo, Akwaya and Upper Banyang representing their municipalities both express appreciation. The action of the senator has really come to grow broaden the scope and taking it at a different level. We really appreciate it. There is the need for every little support that can be given and there's a need for us to sensitize our population on the 
the, the, this pandemic uh, uh, illness that has come. What Chief Tabetondo has done is actually enormous, and we give thanks to him, and we pray that other elites will emulate. The occasion was attended by the Manu administration, law enforcement officers, Manu elite, among them, member of parliament for the Manfe Central Upper Banyan constituency, Honorable Dr. Juan Ebanga Agbontui. I'll take you over to the Public Health Emergency Operations Center here in uh, Yaoundé to join uh, Baldwin Sama, who is standing by with latest updates concerning the spread of the coronavirus in the country. Baldwin, tell us, we hear the number of recoveries keep increasing. Well, good evening to you, Gladys Tata, and welcome to the Public Health Emergency Operations Center this Saturday evening. As you rightly said, the number of confirmed cases of Cameroonians who have recovered from COVID-19 keeps increasing. Tonight, we stand at 697 confirmed cases of Cameroonians who have recovered from COVID-19. Just to inform our viewers that these 697 recoveries concern the nine different regions affected as far as COVID-19 is concerned in Cameroon, and uh, officials of the Ministry of Public Health say their main ambition is to uh, save as many lives as possible. And tonight, we wish to talk about stigmatization that goes with uh, COVID-19 patients in Cameroon with our resource person, Dr. Eric Tanzi, who is a public health expert in the Ministry of uh, Public Health. Once more, good evening, doctor. Yeah, good evening, Baldwin. Uh, tonight, we are talking about stigmatization as far as uh, COVID-19 uh, patients are concerned. Uh, uh, we, have, we have had a lot of misconstrues as far as the spread of this virus is concerned. Tell us, doctor, which are some of the ways through which the COVID-19 cannot be transmitted? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Baldwin. You know, this is a new virus, and the new strain still brings a lot of misunderstanding. It's, it's but normal because uh, research is still ongoing about some of this uh, misconception. However, for now, what we hold in mind is that uh, uh, mosquitoes or flight or insects cannot transmit uh, this infection as far as, far as uh, today research is concerned. However, um, social distancing, like you and I putting on a face mask as well, cannot also transmit this, uh, this uh, pandemic or this virus. Uh, again, visiting somebody in his office or visiting somebody in a home cannot also uh, transmit this virus. But however, uh, we should try as much as possible not to, to promote uh, the visiting or going into public uh, places. Remember, staying at home is the most recommended strategy that can really help to curb this. I know in the community a lot of people, when you tell, for example, an in-law or a family relation that you shouldn't visit me, they shouldn't take it like a taboo. It's but very normal that this is for the safety of uh, the family and even yourself. So it is very important that during this period we should uh, limit uh, visiting as far as uh, the pandemic is concerned. Doctor, many persons who have recovered from COVID-19 face uh, a lot of difficulties to readapt with present day life as far as society is concerned due to the stigma imposed uh, uh, by society. How possible is it for most of these uh, persons who have recovered to easily adapt to present day life, putting aside the stigma? Yeah, here again I should uh, appreciate uh, the health personnel because there is a protocol that is being respected with the patient first uh, to prepare the patient psychologically and equally the family members and friends that are around uh, this patient. When once you recover, uh, you recover from the infection and you get back into the society, it's but normal because owing to the rumor that has circulated around the virus, but there is no need to, pat to panic. Why not to panic because you've seen the number of cases that have been recovered from COVID-19. This should 
tell the population that it's not something that we need to panic, but instead, the earlier we report the issue, the better for our safety. And when you get back into the society, the people who look at you, you you've heard testimonies over the national media that has helped to prove that uh, although I had uh, an illness, but I'm back into the society, I'm living normally. So there should be no need for each and everyone to be worried that when once you've had uh, a disease and you've been treated or recovered from it, you should be able to have a psychological distress. No, there shouldn't be, because our health personnel have prepared this individual and also let the population, just like you and I, we are doing now, to understand that this is just a normal uh, thing for people to, to do and to respect each and every one that has had an issue and come back into the society. There shouldn't be no stigma, there shouldn't be no panic, there shouldn't be no trauma as far as somebody who has recovered and come back into the society. You need to continue with your normal life, but then respecting the measures that have been put in place so that you shouldn't be able to be reinfected again. Remember, we've had cases in other countries that have reported uh, reinfection. So we must be very careful on this and keep respecting, especially the government measures. And finally, what attitude should we adopt towards each other presently in the society? Because, uh, for example, it becomes like incriminating for somebody to sneeze or just to cough in public because accusing fingers will be pointed at you that, hey, you may have COVID-19. And it has affected the way we live, socially speaking. I agree with you, it's but normal once we are in a pandemic that uh, when once somebody produces the signs or symptoms, it should call the attention of each and everyone to be careful. I like that word, that uh, consciousness when somebody sneezes. Yeah, it's but very, very normal. We have to take that. But then we should know that we are also in a period where sneezing, coughing, or headache is normal because during this period in our country, people could experience this. But remember, it is only after a confirmed test that you can declare somebody being uh, infected or not, but coughing, sneezing, or whatever, you should do it with safety. That is why we said wearing a mask, you could do that in a mask, is very good. And again, you could also do it in a handkerchief or a disposable tissue. I think all this is just to let us know that we have to be conscious, especially during this period when there is something. Don't take it as if it is a taboo. It's but normal to experience all this kind of issue. The population should continue to remain calm, vigilant, and observe all safety measures. I think that is very, very important for us to end this pandemic in our community. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Eric Tanzi. Well, Gladys, you'll see that here at the call center of the Public Health Emergency Operation Center, it remains very busy with Camunians who you continue dialing the hotline, the toll free number 1510 on daily basis. Only this Saturday, uh, they received over 5,000 calls here uh, confirming the anxiety on the part of many Camunians to know more about the symptoms of uh, uh, the COVID 19 and the spread of uh, this. Uh, virus in Cameroon. Notwithstanding, the staff who work here are using this opportunity to plead with other Cameroonians to be responsible enough because out of the over 5,000 calls they received here today, more than 4,000 calls were received, uh, calls that had nothing to do with the spread of COVID-19, persons who were simply calling to disturb. The take-home message from here is that 697 confirmed cases of a persons who have recovered from COVID-19 in Cameroon this Saturday. Back to you, Gladys. Well, quite good news there, uh, Baldwin Sama. Thank you very much. And uh, the Circle of Friends of Cameroon, Serac, has donated preventive kits to the population of the Adamawa region to check the coronavirus in that part of the country. The gifts were handed to orphanages, transport associations, and vendors of the Ngaundere main market, as Elis Waji Banmia tells us. The Circle of Friends of Cameroon, Sirak, has taken an active frontline position to stop the spread of the coronavirus in the Adamawa. Through the donation of thousands of hand washing soaps, face masks, tap adapted buckets, and much more, Sirak and its founding president, Mrs. Chantal Bia, hope to halt the spread of the pandemic. The gift targets orphanages, several transport associations, vendors of the Ngaoundi Remain Market, who all express appreciation of the generosity and motherly care demonstrated by the First Lady. 
We are very happy, we are very grateful to our first lady and uh, the whole team for this uh, gift that they are handling to us today in order to fight against the coronavirus. The explanade of the Adamawa governor's office served as a distribution point for the preventive kids while handing them to the beneficiaries on behalf of the First Lady, Mrs. Chantal Bia, Governor Kiyudaji Tageke Buka called on them to make good use of the kids to break the chain of the virus in markets and other public places. With the continuing spread of the pandemic, especially in the Adamawa, the population requires now more than ever before such flexible and timely responses that can only go a long way to intensify the fight against the coronavirus. Honorable Fotso Chebu Kanden Faustin has deposited a sum of 1 million CFA francs into the National Solidarity Fund created by the head of state as her own contribution as well as basic hygiene kits to all the inhabitants of our locality. Kelvin Nembo reports that the former MP distributed the hygiene kits during a ceremony in Baham presided at by the senior divisional officer for Upper Plateau Division. The fight against COVID-19 intensifying in Baham in the Upper Plateau Division as Honorable Chebo Fotso Camden Faustin donates 3,000 face masks, 25 cartons of soap, 300 hand sanitizers, plus 25 bags of rice to the population of our locality, including personnel working in administrative offices. She says it is our duty and that of all other elites to protect the locals. It is Hate them, his and every one of us at his or her one level support the head of state. During the ceremony, in strict respect of the measures prescribed by the head of state and the WHO, the former MP presented a cash payment receipt of 1 million saver francs, saying it is our own contribution to the National Solidarity Fund. The SDO for the Upper Plateau, Iyampen Usmanu, on the occasion, praised the former member of parliament for the laudable gesture and urged the population to make good use of the donation while inviting them to continue to respect all barrier measures put in place by the government to curb the spread of the coronavirus. Inhabitants of the Ilikjua and Itwamiki neighborhoods of Yaoundé have received bags of foodstuff from the Samuel Eto Face Foundation. The food items were distributed to the population as part of Samuel Eto's campaign to assist most families in Cameroon during this difficult moment of COVID-19 spread. Baldwin Sama has the details. Like a solution to the problems faced by many families in the Tuamiki and the Ligijua neighborhoods of Yaoundé during this COVID-19 period, the Samuel Eto Foundation brought several bags of foodstuff to distribute to different families. Families were carefully selected, with 700 of them in the Tuamiki and 700 others in the Ligijua, with a distribution process that was carefully supervised by elements of the police. These families received bags made up of foodstuff of different varieties, which according to most would go a long way to help them during these difficult moments of the COVID-19 spread. The Samuel Eto Foundation, after Douala and Boya, kickstarts this laudable initiative in Yaoundé with these two neighborhoods, as they intend doing same in other neighborhoods of Yaoundé for the next four days after they are distributed face masks to some bike riders, their own way of fighting against the spread of COVID-19. The population of Puma in the Sanaga Maritime Division of the Littoral Region has been equipped with some hygiene kits to fight the COVID-19 pandemic in their division. The gesture is from a nine-woman association dubbed Network of uh, uh, South Women Entrepreneurs. Details with Victor Siga. The population of Puma in the Sanaga Maritime Division is now well armed against the COVID-19 thanks to this association that has extended its largesse to them through this sensitization campaign. Puma is a populated area and it was necessary to start here with this sensitization to save the lives of these people. In the market, they distributed hand-washing facilities, face masks, hand sanitizers, amongst others. 
I'm grateful for this gesture by the association. We are now safe from the ravaging pandemic. The population was in turn enjoined to use the kit to its destined purpose. Now we go to the we now go to the west region where the, the Bamun, the Sultan of Bamun, has equally been sensitizing the population on the COVID-19 in that part of the region. Uh, Ami Banda from CRTV West tells us more in the following report. Stepping up the efforts to cope with coronavirus, Sultan Ibrahim Bombonjoya gave these hygiene and sanitation kits to some health centers of the noon. These donations, which come timely to help the medical personnel to track and contain COVID-19 spread, will go a long way to help denizens who, due to the strict respect and implementation of WHO rules and March 17 government prescribed measures, have for the most part lost out on sales and are working from home. As the number of coronavirus-related infections increase in the region, the Sultan has taken no chances. The Sultan has called on all sons and daughters of the Nun to work in solidarity in their fight against the common enemy, COVID-19. Through his representative, he calls on his subjects to work in collaboration with one another while respecting social distancing to rid of COVID-19. Everyone to stay safe in all efforts to eliminate the coronavirus. They are compared to stay safe if they must protect the infected cases. Donating hundreds of testing kits, face masks, protective suits and face shields to the health centers of the noon was only a step as the medics received some capacity building programs on efficient ways to combat the common enemy. Both ceremonies ended with the sons and daughters of Fumban more than ever sure of placing barricades to the common global and invisible enemy. And that's why we draw the curtains on this edition of the 7.30 News. Thanks for watching. Join Karin Olive Riabid at 8.30 for the News in French. I'll be back tomorrow, same time. Until then, it's good night from all of us on the 7.30 crew.